everybody, and welcome to My Lash Lash 2 Brain Cells. I'm your host, Maddie Morris. And I'm your host, Elliot Morris. And we have announcements. What? We do? Uh Uh-huh. We have our first round of announcements. Oh my gosh, what what are they? We have two announcements. Okay, what is one? one? And most importantly, my tummy just started hurting. Oh no. Oh no. I have to tell everybody. Everyone needs to know. I don't know why. Morning sickness. (gasps) (gasps) (laughs) No, probably because, listen, listen, you put a bagel with cream cheese in your body in at, my, no you put it in front of me it's it's gone gone it's everything gone. else inhaled everything else i eat at a normal pace the world the world fades away i, I intuitively eat all there is is madison you and bagel. put a bagel with a thick schmear of cream cheese inside of it she goes feral i am a feral wild animal That's i true. am a gorilla at the zoo <laughs> i am absolutely i am reckless yeah that's true in pursuit of that bagel um elliot went out with our friends this morning and brought me a bagel and so my tummy hurts and the other announcement is you're probably like where's the youtube video i'm looking for the youtube video you guys there is no youtube video and there's not going to be today and why is that i feel like i need to actually publicly address this i feel because i'm actually I feel like probably i'm actually going to be different for the next like six months just so yeah because i mean the Instagram is going to get a lot of hand content for the next, for the next couple lot, of weeks. Not a lot of yapping. Not a lot of face content, you guys. I think I have a disorder. I think. <laughs> <laughs> she got something. I've had it since I was a born. child. Born. I don't know why. It's like some people, when they get, I have a lot of like anxious energy, and that's why I'm able to propel our company forward. <laughs> yep, yep. It actually is 99% good and in your favor because it's why I'm able to like crank out content, crank out lash products, oh. crank out good ideas. I can do the marketing. Can do the, I have like anxious energy, and I'm always like on high alert. But part of my little, part of my anxious energy is every once in a while i compulsively have the need to rip all of my eyelashes nails hair anything off of my body without stopping and we were on our flight back from orlando which orlando went so amazing yeah which you're you're probably thinking oh no did something happen in orlando that made madison anxious no no best trip ever rate our orlando trip i would Uh, 10 10. i would give it a 10 10 um on our flight back from Orlando, I'm watching Bridesmaids. All is well in the world. I'm comfy. I'm cozy. I'm happy. I've had the best trip. And all of a sudden, like that switch flips in my brain. And she I She gets a little them. voice in her head. And also my lashes. I have a fresh, full set of brown mega volume. They my were gorgeous. Are they were gorgeous. Perfect. Katie slays my lashes and she applies things so precisely. Like Katie, I genuinely think is like one of the, she is one of the best lash artists I've ever in seen the in world. my entire life. I would say the best, but I think I'm genuinely a close second to Katie. She's so precise and good. But I was flying back and that little switch in my brain was like, you need to rip all your eyelashes out right now. And I was like, no, do I have to? And my, my brain was like, no, you have to. The, pr- the plane's going to crash. You need to rip all your eyelashes out. Not pick them out. Rip them all out one by one. And I've done this once in my life. It's so painful. It's so time consuming. It hurts. It's awful. <laughs> You're and probably I- thinking that seems like work. Yeah, it is. I was putting in work. Um, I ripped out all of my eyelashes. I have 15 eyelashes on each eye. So I can't get my lashes done. Me, of all things. Like, why is that my cross to bear in life? Because it's like, that's my one thing. I I don't know. That's my one thing. It is your one thing. It's my eyelashes. Yeah. I run a lash company. Yeah. I do eyelashes for a living. I think that's why you're so... And also when I have my lashes on, I take such good care of them. Like, I, I, they're my, they're my... I love them. I think that's why you're so understanding of when clients are pickers. It has made me very, it's made me a very passionate lash artist. Um, And I know like my lashes will grow back. They always have, they always will. You know, it's very hard for eyelashes to sustain permanent damage, honestly. Um, Like you can get traction alopecia, but honestly, it's, if you're a healthy adult, like eyelashes will grow back. And so I have that peace and hope in my mind. Um, but I did, I just ripped all of them. I've only done it once in my life. It hurts so bad. And my eyes swelled up cause they were so sad and so sensitive. Um, so I'm in my cluster era and that's pretty devastating for me. <laughs> Lightheart heart clusters coming soon. Oh, perhaps I hope this not. is the perfect opportunity for product development. It honestly is. What if we just developed like the no, best I, serum and the best clusters? No, in the world I legit this? think that we should start ordering some samples. 
<laughs> because here's the thing people always ask me like what are your thoughts on diy lashes i love and hate them because i love that they exist because when people like me number one maybe we what if you're someone that doesn't have natural eyelashes i don't have natural eyelashes right now you know great alternative what if you're someone that has an allergy to acrylates great alternative what if you're somebody that can't afford eyelash extensions great, great alternative. alternative what if you travel for work great alternative do i like wearing diy cluster lashes no no i do not like wearing them i think eyelash extensions if you are able to maintain them and like you know you're not allergic they're to way more comfortable eyelash extensions are elite they are lifesavers they are the best investment in your beauty maintenance routine i will die on that hill i hate wearing cluster lashes it, it they're itchy they I, I don't like them and i use you know all the best quality cluster lashes on the market it's just it's not that they're bad because they're fine and some of them are, are really yeah. good and i recommend them to people all the time but in comparison to eyelash extensions they can't compare. when you go from eyelash extensions to ripping all your natural lashes out and having to wear clusters it's such a sad day it's such a sad day. So I'm glad they exist. And I am pro DIY cluster lashes. Absolutely pro DIY cluster lashes. And I'm great at putting them on. But I'm very sad. And I'm probably going... I just feel like a little... I feel like a little sickly Victorian child, Elliot. Yeah. I, I get that. I get, get that. You get that? Yeah, I get that. You're like tan and glowing and beautiful. Yeah. You get that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. I can't relate, but I don't feel. I, I just don't feel like <laughs> me. And I feel stupid. No. And I hate that I did that. And I, it was so fun. I was on the plane and I was taking a little nap and then I opened my eyes and um, Madison shows me her phone and she wrote in the notes. She's like, I'm the worst person ever. I deserve death. And I was like, <laughs> why? And then I look at her. And I'm like, what's wrong? And then she's like you don't see and i'm like no like Guys, what's wrong it literally only sees my heart and my mind i do i see i see the physical person i don't look at her face i look at her soul and i was looking i was looking directly at her and she was like i don't deserve to live and i was like why what's wrong and she's like i tore my eyelashes out and then i like actually looked at her her eyes and i was like oh shoot you did it's awful and it's like i'm you, so sorry you, people don't understand unless they go through it because it's not something you want to do it's not a habit it's like genuinely like a compulsive <laughs> a compulsion it's a compulsion you have to like my brain once i i picked one out my brain yeah. was like do it do it now you haven't done it in three years it's a disorder Just it's a it. disorder for my sure. brain was like what and i knew i was picking them out because it hurt so <laughs> bad and i wasn't picking them i was pulling them out and my brain was like keep going you're See, almost and the thing there. is madison has has pulled her lashes off before yeah. but usually when she does it she like pops them off she like banana peels them she oh, does a good yeah, job yeah and no, she's I, just like lashless but all her naturals doing. are intact. i knew what i was doing and i did it anyway dang yeah and dang. that's why i think there's something wrong with me hey that's okay that's everyone's okay. got something wrong with them it's fine so if you see me less if you see me you <laughs> trying to see what's a ski <laughs> just just uh if you see me lashless out and about <laughs> mind your business mind your business redirect <laughs> your gaze and see, see, <laughs> look away see me for my soul and who i am on the inside okay um we, anyways we need to talk about something important and we have uh 25 minutes before you have a phone call uh actually we have a little more it's at 12 15 so oh good 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 um i want to chat with you guys about the new state board laws that just got passed in the state of arizona and i'm talking about the state of arizona specifically um that is where we live and that is where we are a in-person education company we've been teaching in-person classes here um week after week after week since uh, we moved here three years ago so this affected us and it affects every single lash artist and aspiring lash artist living in the state of arizona so previously in the state of Arizona, you needed to have an aesthetics or a cosmetologist license to perform lash services in the state. So typically the process was you went to aesthetic school or you went to cosmetology school, got your license, passed your state board test. Then as an extracurricular, you could take a lash certification course. There's a difference between a certification and a license. A certification, uh, you can pretty much take anywhere and it means that you learned a new skill. Maybe you learned wispy sets or mega volume or anime sets and you get a certificate for your wall. And that means, oh, I, I trained with this reputable trainer and mm -hmm. I uh, learn this new technique but there's no like legal or licensing thing associated with that no, it's not just like you're doing that for you yeah and also there's certifications in pretty much any industry to yeah to expand oh yeah your education. like you can get like google has certifications for learning how to do search engine optimization like Ab there's absolutely certifications for a certification doesn't replace a license and a license is something that you need and pretty much for 
it, it's it's the barrier of entry for really any trade career. You need a license, you know, yeah. if you your state requires a license. Um, so my experience was I got my esthetician license in the state of Alaska, and then I had, you know, 15,000 working hours, and I was able to apply for reciprocity and transfer my license to be a working lash artist and a licensed technician in the state of Arizona. That's how I had my licensing journey. Um, and up until now, that's what you've needed in Arizona. And they recently did a huge, almost a nine month process of switching that law over. So it mm -hmm. really kept people on the edge of their seat for a long time yeah. of people being like, when is the website going to update? When are the laws going to change? Am I ne going to need to go to school or not? It mm -hmm. really kept people on the edge of their seat. And uh, as of last month, the law did officially change and you do not need to be an esthetician or a cosmetologist anymore. You need to hold a lash license. Um, which is a 30 hour program by a state board accredited school. Um, and that school will award you your license and then you register with the government. Yeah. And so this is obviously a huge change for people in Arizona. Um, but I think it's also important to know for, you know, if you're in another state and you're lashing, because these sort of changes are uh, kind of moving across the country They're right now. They're typically a ripple effect. Yeah. And so like Arizona wasn't the first state to do this. I think uh, like Florida, did they do it first? before us it's been texas for it's a long been, time yeah, yeah texas like a different state maryland doesn't require an Currently, esthetician the license states are very split and really you have to, and people message me every day what do i need in my state you have to look it up your state will yep. will be able to tell you better than anyone on instagram you either need an aesthetics or a cosmetology license or you need a lash license or you need nothing at all yeah so if you're an advanced artist and like you've been doing this for a long time like obviously you got your licensing you got everything uh like you're you're certified and you should be good but it is important to like periodically even if you're a very advanced artist you've been doing this a long time it's important to keep checking in periodically to see like if your laws in your state are changing because they're changing pretty fast usually they're not super well publicized yeah like arizona they were doing some crazy stuff with it so a lot of people were talking about it but in a lot of states they the board of barbers and cosmetology will just they'll change the licensing certifications and it's important to, you know, stay up to date with it to I'd make sure that four to six months, keep up with it, go to the board yeah. and see if there's any changes that need to be made. Yeah. Just go to their website real quick. Just see. Cause yeah. Cause the, and then the way that Arizona did it, like they didn't really publicize it. Like some people were talking about it because it was a really big change, but all they did was update the website and say, Hey, yeah. these are the new, like the new rules. So if you're in Arizona, we can, we'll walk you through kind of how the changes work here, but um, they are similar to the changes that are in uh, some states right now. And they're going to be really similar to the changes that are coming in uh, states in the future. So, you know, if you're not in Arizona, this can still be like very applicable to you. And it's good. It's a good thing to know. Yeah. And this is an episode really for our Arizona girls, because we have such a loyal community of Arizona lash artists that um, either rent from us or pick a product from us or DM us regularly. And, and I want to make this information as accessible as possible to you guys, because I know that it's been very confusing in the past. The other thing is um, Arizona lash artists, if you, uh, you, you need an establishment license as well, that's another thing. Um, and that you can also get through the state website um, where you're registering you know, your location and that uh, allows them to come into your establishment and do their state board checks. When they check for your license, they will also check and ask you for your establishment license as well. Um, so I wanna talk about some pros and cons of the new state board law because the thing is, is I wasn't involved in the process of this new law. And I think because we announced that we are a, uh, we're a state board accredited program, we are able to license people. A lot of people thought that I had involvement in the law change yeah. and they were like, how did you get this passed? Um, why did you do it like this? Like what? And I'm like, D I am not on hey, government Hill. Like, nah, you know, we I had no involvement. I had zero involvement in the change and what, what the state decided on we are gonna take that information and we are going to give people the best education that we can with what is required of them. So we didn't have any involvement in the law being changed. I think there are some pros and I do think there's some cons. Um, the pro is, what do you think the first pro is? I mean, the pro is that it's a lot cheaper to get become a lash artist now, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that for a lot of people, um, 
to start this career, the the commitment of going to you know nine months of school. That's and a in, lot. And investing, you know, sometimes thirty. That's nine months that you're not making money. Yeah. As nine months, you have to pay tuition, so mm -hmm. the tuition is going to be really expensive because it's so a long. A lot of people go to cosmetology school expecting to learn lashes, and it's typically like a few hour intro class or nothing at all. Yeah, you're not learning lashes. You are at all. not learning lashes in school. Yeah, you're learning a lot of unnecessary information that doesn't really apply to you or and your you have business. Have to wait to take your state board exam which takes a yep. long time. They put you on the back of a wait list for a very long time. We know people that have been waiting since 2020 because they went to school during the pandemic or something. Yeah. And they've been waiting for their state board tests forever uh -huh. and ever. Um, so it's a very long, painful process. And then after that, you still need to invest in your lash course and your certifications to learn your craft. And then there's a period of time of practice where you can't take paying clients because you're learning, your timing isn't there. Um, a lot of beginner lash courses are notorious for not being great and for being really, really bare True. bones. So I think that it's very hard to become a lash artist. It could take two, three years just before you're taking clients. Um, so I think that is one of the pros of a lash license is you can get started with your career right away. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can go to a reputable school, learn everything you need to, fills, foreign fills, removals, full sets, client etiquette, safety, sanitation, the whole nine yards. Um, and so I think that is a, a big pro. Um, the barrier to entry is a little more accessible to everyone. I do think the con is it kind of screws people that have previously spent all that time and effort and money investing in esthetician or cosmetology school all for it to be for nothing, really. People like me. Yeah. It's, That's it's, a very valid yeah, reason it's, for, to be upset. It's mad annoying for yeah. people like that. And I think part of it, too, is the rollout was done very poorly. Mm -hmm. um, I think something like this, there should be a, you know, a really long lead time where they tell you exactly what's going to happen, like at least a year ahead of time so that people are able to, you know, make informed decisions as to what makes sense for them because there's, you know, no one knew what this law was going to look like until literally when they posted it because mm -hmm. they were not public about what was going to happen at all and and i was amazed how many arizona lash artists were when we announced we are a school that can license you this is our new program i was amazed at the amount of people in the state in my dms saying i've never heard of this before yeah. or how did you get this passed or don't you think this screws cosmetologists and i'm like I, I do think there's pros and cons, but absolutely, you know, it was as alarming to me as it was to anyone else because the the rollout really was it was done poorly, poorly for sure, yeah, for sure. The rollout was not good there, and okay, if we're going into the cons, also there, one of the major cons of this is that the requirements for this are not very. Wait, I'm scared. Should we smack talk the government? I don't want to like. I mean, what are they gonna do? I don't want them to not like me. Well, I mean, it the the requirements that they laid out for the lash training are I'm, not very tight, well informed. I'm tight with the state board when they come by to check hey, the space. I love like, them. Hey. I love them. They are they are trying their best. They're trying their best. They're made in God's image, but they were not very well informed on how the lash industry works. But when they are they children were. of God, and if you're the state board listening, we love you. We love you, and we you. you know wish you you know what we wish you had talked to us. We wish you were you know we were involved in helping this get passed because it probably would have looked better yeah. i think um not to not to be to toot our own horn too much but um like for example the new uh requirements for lash training includes patch testing like we have to cover patch testing anyone who has a uh a training licensed by the state has to cover patch testing in their training um and patch taste patch testing is outdated don't it's patch not taste. good don't patch taste don't patch taste or patch test. Um, <laughs> don't eat your glue. <laughs> don't eat it. But it's like you, there's no reason to patch test. The, the, it, the, the science has moved on. The requirements for the lash schools and what you have to teach is actually extremely outdated information. It's it's already outdated, yeah. which is the problem because it's, it's, it's only going to no get more outdated. No professionals were involved in... In the making of this curriculum, I can guarantee you. it. It well, and if there were, they were lash artists who were, you know, involved in the industry and like important in the industry five to ten years ago. Yeah. Um, when this information was like up to date, but this is a very young industry, and the knowledge that we have as lash artists progresses progresses very quickly, and where we're at in the industry right now is very different from where we were 10 years ago. And um, like 
products have evolved and changed and uh, the best practices have evolved and changed. And this, um, the requirements of Lash schools per the requirements of the state are not really in line with where the industry is at right now. That doesn't mean that any training that gives you a lash license is going to be bad because, you know, it's completely possible. And like the way we are covering patch testing is we're going to talk about it in yeah, the training. I'll we're going to show people how to patch. Yeah. We're going to show people how to patch test. Also and then we're going to talk to them about why it's probably not the most effective way to see if your clients have allergies. And what is more important than patch testing is teaching your new baby beginner lash artist students about good allergy protocol. Yeah. What to do when a client does develop an allergy. And, and I think there's also, I don't want to just trash patch testing because a lot of people aren't really familiar with like yeah. where we're at on it. Our position on patch testing is that, so the way allergies generally develop is people will not have an allergy in general to an allergen the first time they are exposed to it in general. So if you say have a, uh, if you're allergic to bees, if you're allergic mm -hmm. to bee stings, you are not likely, it's, it's possible, but you are much less likely to have a severe allergic reaction to a bee sting the first time you are stung by a bee. You are much, much more likely, if you're going to be allergic to bees, to have those really severe reactions where, you know, you go into anaphylaxis, you like swell up a ton. The second or third or fourth or fifth time you get stung by a bee, it's not going to happen the first time in general. Sometimes it does, but it's much more rare. Like the vast majority of people who develop allergies to anything develop them over a period of time. Um, one thing that a lot of people experience is if they move to a new state, they and and they've had seasonal allergies say in the previous place they lived we experienced this when we moved to arizona yeah. um we had both madison and i had really bad allergies in alaska and like every spring and summer we'd be super allergic like no stuffy sneezing like because of like the cottonwood trees and the birch trees and everything that was up there in alaska when we moved down here first three years we lived in in arizona we didn't really have allergies because our bodies had not developed those allergies yet and um now this spring was like kind of the first time yeah. where we started really like you know our noses were we were like stuffy all the time sneezing all the time like eyes watering not nice and it's because it takes time for you to develop allergies so bringing this back around to patch testing if you patch test a client with you know adhesive with your you products put 15 fans on each corner of the eye and see what happens with your client most of the time most yeah most of the time they're not going to have a allergic reaction even if they are going to develop one in the future so it can give you a false sense of confidence yeah. um and it can if you patch test and they don't have a reaction you i mean kind of it, it's inevitable that you're gonna think oh this client's good so then if six months a year into them getting lashes they develop an allergy they it's gonna be very confusing it's gonna be super confusing for you because you're gonna think oh i patch tested them what is this this guy this can't be an allergy this has to be something else and when in fact it, it probably is just an allergy but it took time to develop um what's way more important in modern day lashing is having rock solid allergy protocol which i don't yep. see 99 percent of lash Under, having. understanding how to detect when someone is having an allergic reaction understanding what that looks like so if it ever happens you understand you know what you're seeing and then also having really good protocol for what to do when it does happen because the first time someone has an allergic reaction to lash adhesive it's generally not going to be an emergency it's not going to be something where you know it's the absolute end of the world they're going to lose their eyeball yeah none, nothing really bad is going to happen when they first develop an allergy it's it will get worse over time and that person can't continue getting lash extensions probably but it's not like patch testing them isn't going to save you from something down the line. And so that's the reason that it's like that specifically yeah. is outdated because the people only, used to think that was a good idea. Yeah, I do a lot of special event lashes and weddings and um, very important events. Um, and the only reason I would ever patch test, what I wouldn't even call it a patch test, I would call it a trial, um, would be for my own peace of mind and really to just have that person wearing lashes before a big event. So if I have a bride, um, I, I do a trial set the same way that I would do a trial makeup application to see if they like their lashes, if there's any issues, anything we want to change up. But I always let my clients know um, 
you know, what is way more important than patch testing and why that's not going to be the best uh, use of our time when, when they're uh, in being introduced to Lash Extension. So there was a lot of things with what the board required of the Lash licensing programs to have that were outdated or that weren't, weren't current. Yeah, so yeah. that was um, a little uh, a little a little cringe, I would say. Cringe. Um, but other than that, I think there is a huge benefit to making it much easier to get in the absolutely, industry. Absolutely. I think there are a lot of artists that are concerned that the bar now has been lowered. The um, the ease of get becoming a lash it's it's much easier to become a, a lash lot artist. A people now. are concerned about that, and, and so they're concerned about it for like prices and for yeah. like competition. And if you only have to pay. You know, well, here's the thing. When I'm going to talk about it. When I f first saw that this law was coming out and I thought, okay, this is now a licensing program specifically for lash artists. That's very official. That's exciting. It gives lash artists, you know, that's a whole, like, it's legitimate, whatever. Um, how I thought that these training programs would probably be between 10 to 15 grand at least because it's a license. It's a 30-hour program. Well, the, in, in the alternative previous to uh, this existing as an option was esthetician school, which is 30, 40, 50 grand. Yeah. So if you were having to pay, you know, 50 grand to go to esthetician school, and now there's an option that's way cheaper, I think it's very reasonable that something that's going to allow you to start a new career, a new high paying career where you're able to generate much higher income than really anyone else who has taken a one week training. There are very, very few careers. Like now that this 30 hour training is available, lashes in Arizona at least are one of the only careers where you can take a 30 hour training yeah. and make a six figure income yeah. off of that. Yeah. Like obviously it takes more than just taking the training. Like you have to invest in developing your skills and becoming good, but there are very few things like electricians, electrician apprenticeships are far longer, far more difficult. Like any other trade, Absolutely. this this is like, has made lashes kind of one of the most approachable trades to a beginner um, who obviously you have to invest in your skills and you have to actually get good. But just from a licensing perspective, it has made lashes extremely easy to get into um, and extremely uh, my compelling. My fear as a trainer is, you know, when I saw this, I, I try to see everything from the bright side. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a really great way to give beginners an, an incredible training where they can go out and start their career. But what I'm seeing is that people are going to pack hotel rooms filled with 20 people. There's no... Yeah. Um, there's nothing in the law that says you need to train people one-on-one -on -one or two yeah. at a time. There's no, maximum, there's group no size. maximum group size. So our trainings are private trainings, maybe up to two or three students with yep. multiple trainers. Well, but so here's the thing. We right now are offering on the website, we're offering this 30 hour training. Yeah. I don't know how much longer we'll actually offer the 30 hour training um, because one of the things that we have seen, <clears throat> obviously this is very, very new. Yeah, we didn't know how it was gonna pan out. Yeah, we didn't know how it was gonna pan out. But we also aren't in, we don't, we haven't spoken to anyone else that's offering this. So this is just all purely from what we've Yeah, we've, from what we've yeah. seen of what people are advertising, but it looks like a lot of people who have gotten their trainings approved have chosen to price them at as low as a thousand dollars for their 30 hour training. Um, and as you know, people who have run a lot of trainings, a lot of group trainings, private trainings, um, and really value the results that we get for our students, um, we know that it is very, very difficult to provide a very thorough and good training to people for less than a thousand dollars. Um, and especially, and that's, that's even for like a one, uh, that's even for a one day training, yeah. having a 30 hour training. So like essentially a one week long training that you're charging even under $4,000 for, I think is going to be very difficult for people to provide a very, very good product. It's, it's absolutely possible that there are going to be trainings that are really good, that are very affordably priced. By, and that are trained by people who are very passionate about getting beginners into Absolutely. the lash industry. And I really hope that that ends up being the case. But um, if you're thinking about, if you're looking at it from a lash artist perspective, why would a, like, 
if someone is charging a thousand dollars for a 30 hour training they would need to a get licensing class. a licensing class they would need to get at least 10 people in that training for that even to be worth the time and uh resources to put on because if you're thinking about it, if you're a trainer presumably i would hope that if you are a trainer training beginners how to become lash artists you should be able to be a successful lash artist yourself i think that is the minimum so requirement the opportunity cost right of you teaching these classes so yeah so if you're teaching you these have classes to sacrifice a week's worth of yeah. clients yeah that's you not taking clients for a week by us paying katie to teach these classes we are not only taking her away from her position at lightheart but from her full-time clientele you know, the opportunity cost of that is thousands and thousands of thousands dollars. of dollars. And the only people teaching these classes should be fully booked, professional working lash artists. Who are doing this as an alternative to being fully booked lash artists. So the pricing doesn't make any it doesn't sense. make any sense unless they're filling their goal is to, to fill, fill trainings up with, you know, 10, 20 students. Of course, yeah. So that they can, you know, make it up like quantity over quality yeah. sort of thing. Um and I don't think that for a for something as important as licensing for a beginner student, I don't think that that can get you really good um, results. I really hope that it can. Like, I hope so too. I really hope so too. There's there's a lot of there's so there's a lot of the curriculum that I think can be taught well with. In, in a group setting, like a lot of the kind of lecture style material theory, where you're just absolutely. teaching them theory, teaching them, you know, the information you can have, you know, that can be a, a college seminar. You can have freaking a hundred people in there. It doesn't matter because you're just does require you to do full sets, fills and removals on live models. Exactly. And that's the part where I think it's going to be very, very difficult for someone who unless they're working on mannequin heads, which but doesn't it require live models? I don't know. It just said full sets, fills, and removal. So I guess they could. Replace I guess them they with could be doing. But then you don't get. But then you don't get them working on actual people, which I think is a very important part of the training because yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, people are very different from mannequin heads, and I think it's it's really important from like a safety perspective yeah. that the first sets that a brand new beginner artist does on a person are supervised and they become yeah i think it's very important that they're supervised so that and and closely supervised so that as soon as that beginner artist does anything wrong the trainer can intervene before they harm their client or yeah. do anything that could cause pain or discomfort or even injury yeah and and i think that's very important and so if you're doing if you're teaching a class you have one trainer teaching a class with 15 people that is going to be uh very difficult for them to effectively supervise that many it's people. It's going to cost you a lot more in the long run to, you know, if you're working on mannequins in a hotel room with 30 people mm -hmm. to relearn, to yeah. reteach, re get retaught. Yeah. And so like, I, I took a lot of trainings, you know, in big group settings in the beginning, not for my license, but for just trainings. Mm -hmm. And when you're working on mannequins in a huge group setting, it, yes, it can be taught effectively, of course, but it's for a beginner that's never held tweezers before. It's so important that a beginner has really, really close, like one-on-one, -on -one, like You're working interaction. with people's anatomy. Exactly. I mean, it's it's super important. And like, I really don't want us talking about this to come off as, oh, we are our like, class good, our class is bad. good, other no. class bad. I am only saying this because I think that this is a brand new industry basically that has popped up and i think the way the industry start is starting i think can is likely to cause issues down the road and that's the only reason i'm bringing this up is because i what i think is likely to happen if and i don't think us talking about this is going to change anything but i just want to make sure that you know the people who are are in our our audience know the uh issues that can happen if you um if trainings are run this way so that they can you know make informed decisions and i think the thing that is likely to happen going forward is that a lot of trainings will be conducted because you know it's very very easy for a student to um who is go getting into lashes it's going to be much easier for them to take a thousand dollar training than it is for them to take a more expensive training so i think these thousand dollar trainings are going to do very very well and i think they're going to get a lot of students um at the beginning and the thing that i worry about which 
could be unfounded. And I hope that I'm wrong. I really do because like the worst case scenario, it's bad for everyone. It's bad for artists, it's bad for clients. I think the thing that could happen though is that a lot of lash artists will go into the industry not being prepared to take live clients and there are going to be a lot of clients that get lashes from beginner artists who are charging, you know, low prices because they're beginners. And so a lot of people are going to be getting their first sets of lash extensions. And this isn't speculation because these people that have taken beginner classes that are run this way, they message me. They message us class, all the time. A random, a random brand on Instagram and they say, hey, help me with this. I have a client that this happened. I have a client that's happened. My trainer won't respond to me. Exactly. I didn't learn this. I need help. And this is, it, this is something that I need help with immediately. No one will help me. I know you respond to your DMs. And that's heartbreaking because it's mm -hmm. like, this is a job that we, people have, people in this industry have fought so hard for, for it to be well-respected. And so I'm praying with these beginner, you know, these laws that come out where beginners, you know, only need a 30 hour life. A lot of people were mad that it wasn't a longer training. I too agree. It should have been a longer training. It, I think it should have, but it should have been, you know, but, but we that's have, what they we decided with what we have. And so I think for the Arizona trainers that are out there that want the best for this industry, because I know them, they're out there. If you're an Arizona lash trainer and you want the best for this industry, just give these beginner classes your all. Give them your all, give them everything you can um, because they're the next generation of lash professionals in our state. And um, you don't wanna, you don't wanna have them DMing, you know, random brands that they didn't train with. You don't wanna have them DMing random people in Facebook groups asking for advice. You want them to be fully equipped with everything they need um, from the get-go. And so I just my encouragement would just be to to really uh what would you say just carefully consider i think if you're looking into getting a if, if you're in arizona and you're looking to take a lash training i would just be very i would ask a lot of questions about yeah. what specifically is taught what the class sizes are class and sizes is big i think class sizes is huge and if it's more than if it's more than 10 i think that's way too many if it's if it's more than 10 that's way too many um especially for a beginner class i think for more advanced classes i think it's easier to have well, that's the thing for more advanced classes like they're, they're just learning a new technique they are absolutely you can absolutely do more clients. people oh you could have as many you can have 10 you, you could have 12 you could have 20. classes of 25 in and, and hotel rooms yeah but even with 25 though you need multiple trainers well, we, for sure i worked for a bigger brand and we had four trainers at those things and we also yeah. had um, and the students are extremely advanced. They just want to learn new techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a different story. Um, the last thing that I wanted us to touch on um, before you have to get to your uh, meeting, Elliot, mm -hmm. is how can lash artists get their new lash license if they're already practicing lash artists? Um, oh, so if you're a lash artist in Arizona um, and you've, you have you've been it. lashing, yeah. um, before October of 2023, I have no idea. This is another thing that is so silly about how they implemented this. But we love you, State Board. Sure. We <laughs> uh -huh. um, they have this like six month, like, like Valley of Despair that they Please, implemented. Not the Valley of where Despair. Where if you were a certified lash artist before October of 2023. Certified, not licensed. Yeah, well, if you had your esthetician license and you were doing lashes before October, or if you didn't have your esthetician's license and you had just taken a lash certification, like any lash certification, then um, you can submit your lash certification to the state board on the state board website. Just go to like Arizona Lash, lash License. Yeah. And you can submit it and you can get approved. Um, and you'll get your lash license. You just submit your certification. Um, th that's the other thing that a lot of people are really angry about in Arizona is that, you know, up until May 1st of this year, there were a lot of people who were uh, unlicensed lash techs. And a lot of licensed lash techs don't really like the... Um, the stigma that a lot of unlicensed lash techs can give to the industry because a lot of unlicensed lash techs are the ones who are um, causing issues for clients and it gives a bad name to the whole industry. Um, now, every unlicensed lash tech in Arizona, as long as they took any training, any lash training, Bob's lash training, yeah, they could take, they could go with like a girl down the street who was like, yeah, I'll train you a for a day, who's yeah. a hairstylist who printed 
a certificate from a Canva template. They could submit that Canva template certificate and get their lash license equivalent to the person who took a full esthetician training got a scholarship got a spent fifty thousand oh. dollars on esthetician training they both now like the can have the exact same lash license to put your scrubs on drive to school oh. d- and that i just i just so feel for the people like like yeah, it was me too. i mean yeah, yeah you did it i, did I feel for it. everyone who got a full esthetician's license because that sucks that's just that sucks me too a lot of people um that are in other states where you do still have to have your cosmetology license or aesthetics license they said i actually think this law is really good um and i would love to see it happen in my state because it makes no sense that we have to go to school for this long how do i how do they have any power to get things like those laws changed how do these laws happen so i mean people lobby for them people lobby for them there's there are some like owners of lash brands who have lobbied for these laws to change it started in like you know texas and and um i think texas was was where it started um but now we're at the point where a lot of state boards are looking at what other states have done and are starting to implement stuff and so if you're a lash artist in a state and you or you want to become a lash artist in a state i don't think there's many people who are not lash artists who who listen to this podcast but if you are um you can reach out to your state board and you can ask them if this is a thing that is on their radar. Um, they probably won't respond to you because state boards um, never do. Um, and most of them are very bad at their jobs. But if you do get a response, you know, maybe you can help push that process forward um, in your if in your you fi- state. If you find any way to get contact with them. Yeah. Which is going to be very difficult. They all are very difficult, except for Arizona. We love Arizona. We love They're great. Arizona but... State Board. No, it's so funny, you guys, because we obviously, have, with the salon suites, we have tons of renters in the building. And so every, you know, quarter or so, they come in and, and they go to all the suites and they check for all the licenses and whatever. And my room has a big window in it and there's no lock on the door um, because my room is kind of the front of house and, and, uh, I like to kind of see what's going on at the coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And so it's so funny when the state board comes in, they always look through my window and I go, Hey, you know, and, and I'm always like, Hey, let me give you a tour. Do you want a free coffee? Like let's walk around. <laughs> and I was so funny cause I actually saw, it was like a few months ago. I saw the state board woman having coffee in our coffee shop. That's so funny. Was, yeah. Just hanging out. So I said hi to her and I was like, Oh, hi, are you doing like your checks or whatever? She's like, Oh no, I was just in the area. So she's just like working and getting coffee. I was like, I love this so much. So I've always had a fine experience with the state board in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, just from the checks because they honestly, I'm, I'm going to be real. Nice ladies. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to schmooze them or anything, but they do seem better than most of the state boards that I've heard of people interacting with. Yeah. I've, Cause I've, it sounds like a lot of States are much worse. They're, they're just doing their thing. The lady that comes by lay her and, and she's kind of the strictest one. You know, her daughter's an esthetician. She just, that's just what she does. Yeah, she's like, just doing her job. These people aren't, you know, evil. They're just like doing their job, but it is it is hard to get in contact with them. And, and even when I was transferring my license, they lost my license, didn't send it. It took like eight months for it to happen. Yeah, so was. like I've had poor experiences dealing with trying to get a response from state board. So don't be discouraged about it. You know, just use your voice as much just as you Just be persistent. Can. And with whatever laws that you do have in front of you or whatever you do have to, have to do in order to do your job, just... Do the best you can. And and the last thing too is if you know anyone who is looking, who is thinking of, you know, getting their esthetician's license, becoming a lash artist, make sure that they or you help them do as much research as possible into if the laws are going to be changing soon yeah. in your state. Um, because there are a lot of people who wanted to become lash artists in Arizona who started taking esthetician uh who went to cosmetology school halfway through. a month or yeah. two before it became like you can't just yeah you off. not even the way to do it like it's not even unnecessary anymore it's that they cannot become lash artists now after going to esthetician school yeah like they can graduate esthetician school and then the state board will say okay great now if you want to be a lash artist now you have to take this 30 hour training yeah doesn't even matter that you went to esthetician school yeah. so make sure that if you are or you know someone who wants to become a lash artist that the laws aren't going to be changing soon because they are changing in a lot of states and so just make sure you stay on top of it a lot of people said how did you become a licensed lash school i applied online it there was is. honestly, honestly, I'm going to be so it real. Easy. It was way too easy. I thought that it was way too. They didn't even ask for our curriculum. No, nope. they just said, will your curriculum I include spent, these guys, things? I, I spent the last year redoing our curriculum to make it 
the lash bible yeah to make it the best in the world the best and they didn't building. even look at it and then when it, when i go to submit it there's no submit it they just said teach these things and and this is why i'm concerned for like the thousand dollar lash training i was because as a trainer i was gearing up for this long yeah. for the last year and, and that's why i rewrote our curriculum to be so yeah. locked in perfect that that any government yeah. could look at it and say this is but if incredible but if they're not going to look at it then that means there are going to be people that I, I guarantee you, some of the people who have certified lash trainings in Arizona have not written a curriculum. They don't have a manual. They went on the website and it said, your curriculum needs to include these things, does it? And they said, yes. And then they got approved and they do not have a manual. I guarantee that's oh, the case. Oh, it's happened because people have DM me and they've asked if and, they could buy mine and use it. No. And, and, <laughs> and, and some of those people already have certified trainings in Arizona. So it's out there and those are the, you know, thousand dollar lash trainings that we are concerned about. You know, and yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to trash anyone who's out there, you know, trying to make money, do trainings. If you're doing it the right way, I think that's amazing. But I know for a fact that there are trainings out here that are trying to get students just by being very low priced. They are not focused on giving a quality experience to their students, and they are going to produce lash artists that can be dangerous to themselves and to their clients. And I think that is the big thing that we are, you know, worried about because we just care about the lash industry in general, and we want this industry to grow. We don't want it to get a bad reputation, and we care about the success of lash artists. And, and we, are, we are Arizona residents, baby. Yeah, We're exactly. Do what we can for our people, and so we just want to do everything we can to to help lash artists, yeah. and that's that's where our loyalty is, and that's that's who we care about and so we just want to make sure that you know anyone who's listening to this is informed and and knows you know what the industry looks like and knows how to make the best decisions absolutely but um, i gotta run so you gotta run you gotta do big business yeah i gotta do big business things so you love you all so much love you all so 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 much and um i missed you we haven't podcasted in a minute because we were traveling but um i love you guys so so much ellie's gonna take this call and then we're gonna film more episodes Yay! Yay! um we love you guys so much if you have any questions about these new laws um you guys know where to find me i i'm still responding to my dms so i will be there i'll meet you there smooches smooches love you guys so much bye